Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Today I have a huge blind buy perfume haul. You know, every now and then I get this urge to go on FragranceNet and just check out some of the perfumes that they have. They offer a lot of discounted perfumes, more affordable perfumes, and I am on the hunt always to find scents that are more affordable that I really genuinely enjoy. And I feel like on the discount sites, a lot of the times they carry fragrances that might be uh, hard to get. They're not as widely available. Maybe they're just a little bit older. And so if you're going into Sephora, you're going into a department store, they might not have those scents to actually smell. So a lot of the times you're on your own, you gotta kind just go for it and uh, I have quite a few here I'm excited to go through I have not opened them up it is true first impressions true blind buys except for one of these I've kind of smelled a couple of times but I don't have a, a really good grasp on it so I am excited I'm gonna go through the notes with you as I open each of these up and let you know kind of what I was thinking like why I thought these would be good because I don't just go for it entirely like I'm on Fragrantica looking up notes looking at reviews that way but notes can be so deceiving and some Sometimes you think you're gonna love something, it seems like a hole in one and it ends up being bad. And then there are so many other perfumes that I've tried that I really enjoy that the notes would never convince me to buy, but somehow the magic and the mixing makes them so good. So let's just get into it. Okay, I'm gonna start off with this Guess perfume. This is Guess Seductive Red. I've been seeing different people talk about Guess ones. I'm not sure if this is it, the like one that they like, but when I was looking at the notes on the website, this is one I thought sounded good. So this has a cherry note in it that had me so excited. I've been really into that macaron scent from Keese. I just, oh, so, so good. So I've been loving cherry a little bit more than I have in the past. So I'm excited to see how this one is. I think all the perfumes I'm talking about were 50 or under. And I think this guess one might be like 20 or under. It was pretty affordable. So now's the moment of truth. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm like excited and like nervous. You guys get like that? I'm like, I hope I like it. Okay, I can smell the cherry. It's not super tart, lots of sweetness going on. I get kind of a powderiness as well. Still something fruity, it's soft, it's nice. This is nice. It has a little bit of a shampoo quality to it and also I'm getting like, oh, what is that? It's like some candy or something that I've smelled before. Very sweet, but in a soft way. It's not too tangy. This one I'm pretty into. It has some almond notes in it, but I feel like the almond in here is really nice. Almond can kind of be hit or miss for me. It has a little bit again of that showery scent and and that does make it feel a little bit cheaper. I feel like if this were a more niche scent, there would be something kind of standing out more. It feels just kind of overall blended, but still super likable. Like I totally understand how people would like this. And I have to kind of give a disclaimer. I'm not necessarily the best at smelling things off the bat. Like I need to wear them. I need to try them. Sometimes things need to grow on me a little bit more. I do have those moments where I just genuinely love something or genuinely hate something off the bat, but I will say there's kind of in between fragrances sometimes I just need a little bit more familiarity with them to really know how they work for me would I wear them that type of stuff but this is one that I would spray on myself I would actually use it just has again I feel like something with celebrity scents or even just more inexpensive scents um, when they go fruity sometimes they can go like a shampoo smell or they remind me of something in the shower something from Bath and Body Works but solid especially again for the price I think this is a solid one next this is one from DK and why this is the Be Delicious Guava Goddess. I believe this one came out last year and I had my eye on it since last year. I kind of have a thing with the DKNY apples. We won't get into it right now. Fruity perfumes, you know, I either get on with or don't. And guava is not a fruit you necessarily see all the time. So I was definitely intrigued by this one. Oh, the top, you guys, it's like sandpaper on the top. That's disgusting. Texturally, the top of this is unsettling, <laughs> unnerving, makes me wanna rip my skin off. Okay, we'll take that off for now. <laughs> Let's actually smell this thing. So I'm very Granica, this is dubbed as like a woody citrus scent. There's guava blossom, mandarin, some woods. Oh yeah, not good. Okay, personally, personally to me, I do get a bit of like the kind of DKNY, I mean, their flankers are so far removed from the apple. I mean, they just are putting it in the apple at this point, but I know there are some other uh, apples like this that smell kind of like this, but this for coming out in like 2022, I think 
uh, it just doesn't have like a, a current smell to it. Do you know what I'm saying? To me anyway, like I almost can't tell you what I'm smelling. It smells maybe something kind of floral and tropical at the same time. Again, maybe it's like a tropical shampoo and like after you get out of the shower, the way your hair smells, maybe as this is drying down, I'm like, okay, I could get that. That initial blast though smelt just almost like Coca-Cola, but in a bad way. Like I have a perfume here that I bought because of a Coca-Cola note, we'll get into it. Cause it is exciting to try things with fun notes, but I don't know about this one. I'm not sure. I just don't think it's anything special and I don't even get something super guava to me. I mean, I don't guess, I don't really like know what guava 100% smells like, but I don't think it's this. <laughs> but maybe it's because it's guava blossom. I feel like the dry down on it though is getting better. So maybe there's hope for it yet. <laughs> maybe there's a little bit of hope for that one. Okay, speaking of my weird little obsessions and collections when it comes to perfumes, I have a whole thing going with the Britney Spears Fantasy. Britney Spears Fantasy, the original bottle is such an iconic perfume to me uh, when it comes to celebrity scents, but also just in my life, iconic, right? Like that is a scent you just know everyone wore. Like it is so big to me and so I have a little thing. They keep coming out with Britney Spears perfumes and I will keep buying them. So this one is a blissful. This one did launch in 2022. The notes on this are usually not anything I would pick up but again it's more the collection of it like I just can't get over. These little potion bottles I have so many of them. I just love it. I really do. So let's smell blissful. Let's see if maybe it's something I like more than I would think considering the notes. There's like some ozonic accords there's some white florals oh yeah i mean it smells nice it smells nice the notes let me read you some of them melon oh yeah i'm getting the melon for sure you definitely smell the melon in here it smells kind of happy and summery and sunny lots of floral notes coming out as well but there's that sweet melon i think it's interesting there's also something kind of um almost soapy to it i guess but it has lots of florals there's freesia there's lily there's jasmine there's tuberose like it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot maybe not one I'm gonna wear a ton but I'm not gonna lie I'm like so happy to have this one this one came out and I was seeing people selling it for like tons of money and you know these just don't like hold a value like that like to me they're more like the value I give personally um so I'm so glad when I can find them for I think this was like $25 which I thought was a really great price the other one though this is Naked Fantasy and I believe this one also maybe came out in 2022 Ooh, look at that bottle I like this bottle a little frosted glass it has like the rhinestones it reminds Reminds me of like the toxic music video where she's in all rhinestones but naked. That's the vibe of this to me, I love it. This one has a little bit more notes that I'd be into. It has some vanilla, it has peach, there's a cupcake note, which I think some of her past ones have also featured cupcake. Let's see. Yeah, it is sweeter. It's hard. Sometimes with these cheaper perfumes, just off the bat, you gotta give them some time to dry down. I feel like that alcohol stays with them a little bit longer. You know, you don't get that like true scent until a little bit later. I feel like this is more soft though, like a little bit more of like a skin scent, even though it has some peach and all that. I'm really just getting something soft, sweet, a little bit powdery, uh, but nothing discernible. Like I would never be like, oh, I smell the cupcake. Like I don't smell the cupcake. I don't even feel like I smell peach really but I kind of like that it doesn't have too much of a fruity tang or anything going on I wonder how this one's gonna be on the skin I definitely want to try it again let the alcohol kind of like dry up dry off get into the dry down a little bit more get into like the base notes because that cupcakes in the base so maybe it'll pop out a little bit later either way I'm super excited to add these to the stash I'm not gonna lie one of the perfumes that I have been eyeing for a while this is the only thing that isn't really a blind buy in here this is the Dolce and Gabbana garden and I know that this is more of like a coconut kind of summery scent and I feel like a lot of people have recommended this one to me and uh, you know because it's in this bottle I'll show you it in a second let me get it out it's a really cute little bottle but because it's so floral heavy it's called garden I feel like the name's a little misleading to what the notes actually are and so I never really wanted to give it a chance but the actual notes on it it says coconut and almond milk vanilla with a lot of other florals so 
I'm expecting something kind of sunscreeny and usually that would turn me off like I would not want that but I feel like I don't know what it is like as my nose has changed as I've been getting into more scents I do kind of like that sunscreen coconut scent instead of a more pina colada coconut scent which is an interesting kind of turn of events for me no this is good I like this I'm excited to wear this because this actually almost smells like it has like a lemon or like a citrus so there's a lightness to it it's not too creamy but it's also I don't get something too floral either like it has the florals but that isn't like the initial thing I'm picking up and then it has that light creaminess light sweetness kind of coming in saving it turning it before it gets too sharp or again too floral or anything like that so I'm excited for this it also feels light enough to wear during the hotter months you know and into spring where you just want to feel light and not heavy you don't want to feel like weighed down you maybe don't want to feel like the most delicious baked good ever <laughs> you know what I mean like I love that for winter and for the colder months I love those heavy gourmands but this kind of gives you that tiny little taste of that while still being light so this one I'm actually really really excited for and I'm glad that I was able to get it on a discount on fragrance net I'm excited to see how that develops on my skin I still have six more perfumes to talk about and a sample I know I went hard on this I feel like that's what I do if I'm gonna order from fragrance net I usually do a lot and then maybe do that like twice a year or so because it's tough when you blind buy this stuff and you don't know if you're gonna like it you know it can be a little sobering of how good stuff actually is or isn't you know based off other people but when you find those gems or when I find those gems I feel like it's really worth it to be able to recommend and to like perfumes that are a little more inexpensive so this next one this is from Nina Ricci I don't think that I have any Nina Ricci scents oh wow this is the actual sprayer how cute, this bottle is like a little apple. Let me take this little tag off. It's a very, very cute bottle. This is the like Le Gourmand collection. It's limited edition. I felt like there was a lot online though, so I'm not really sure, but the main accords on this on Fragrantica, caramel, coconut, it said sweet. I was like, okay. Uh, tell me more. This says pear, coconut milk, caramel, sandalwood, and I'm excited to try it. We'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed it's actually good. Okay, kind of hard to get it going, but once you do, Okay, I smell the pear a lot. I'm getting like a specific memory with the pear and I can't place it. It's like a pear jelly bean, jelly belly. Je oh, that's what it is. It kind of smells like the way the pear jelly belly jelly bean tastes, which I think is a distinct pear because I have a lot of pear perfumes, but this is literally that plus hairspray to me. That's what I'm getting. I don't get too much of the caramel, at least right now. And I really don't feel like I get coconut milk at all. Like I don't get anything milky. I don't get anything like that. It's really just like a pear jelly belly. Wow. It kind of threw me off a little bit because it's so almost like a green pear very juicy, a little tart like that. Huh. And then it has that like hairspray kind of quality. Like it smells like a hair product. You know what I mean? Like a Garnier fruit teas hair product or something like that. Not so sure. I love this. It's very strong on the pear. That is something I should learn from is that I feel like when pear is in a perfume, it just takes over. Pear is like, who knew? Like, does anyone eat pears? That, I don't feel like people even eat pears that much, but damn, in perfume, it takes over a perfume. You really can smell it a lot. <laughs> in all the perfumes I have. I like when pear goes a little more musky, I guess. This one stays very sweet and fruity, you know? It doesn't have those musky components and I feel like something more like Juliet Has a Gun Pear Ink or even if we're gonna go sweeter, I really like the pear in Sweet from Ellis Brooklyn, which is very similar to God is a Woman, which is similar to Radiant Nectar from Clean Reserve. Like all those kind of have a similar moment going on. Um, but that's like a different pear, I promise you, than those. Next one, this got me because of a popcorn note this did i've seen people talk about this let me get it open it's like bad asmr <laughs> i thought i got the bigger bottle i'm gonna have to check because i really wanted the one with the snake on it that was something i really did want this is the 30 mil though so i guess it doesn't well if i don't like it i guess it won't be a big deal but i really love the bottle of the uh pure excess and this is from paco Rabanne. this is one i've definitely heard people talk about and i was interested in smelling it i'm actually you know it has some peach notes in here and i didn't realize right now as i'm 
smelling it, it reminds me of a very faint, like not as strong, maybe not as sharp, 100 Silent Ways. Like it, it's like a deeper, fuzzy version. I don't know, something in that realm, but then I am getting something savory. I am getting a little bit of that popcorn note. That's what I really wanted to smell. I wanted to smell popcorn. I'm like, what the heck, that sounds so fun. I actually have some of the most potential to try. It does remind me of a lot of like designer perfumes. So if you're into things like YSL, Black Opium, you're into things like, I don't know, any of those like what feel like sexier uh, designer perfumes. It definitely has that going. I guess that makes sense <laughs> for what it is. But it's kind of interesting because that popcorn note is there. It adds something savory. It adds something almost like, I wanna say peppery. This is one I wanna get on my skin and really like get a cloud going and see how I like it. But I will say, I wish I had that bottle. The bottle is so pretty. It looks just like a seductive Medusa moment. Like I love it. <laughs> It's so cool. This one is promising. I'm excited to keep testing it. The other weirder note that I was excited to try, this is Girls Can Be Crazy from Zadig and Voltaire. I really enjoy a lot of the Zadig and Voltaire stuff and I just enjoy smelling it nonetheless. Like my favorite is This Is Her. I mean, it is just, I mean, I love that fragrance, but I feel like the other ones I've smelled from them all have something a little bit different going on with them and I'm just like always down to try them. So this is a really cute bottle. It's like rose gold. The top is very textured. It almost feels like a piece of hardware. Uh, I have another one from the same line from them and it's the same thing, but silver. Uh, but I really love, honestly, the bottle aesthetic of this. So I'm hoping I like the smell. We'll see. It has that Coca-Cola note, so intriguing. It also does have pear though. So we'll see if pear just like takes over the game. There's some vanilla and there is some patchouli in the base as well. So it, it'll be interesting to see how this actually goes. Ooh, good sprayer. Okay. I pick up something that is very like powdery and spicy at the same time. There is some sweetness, but there's no like creaminess to this at all. The vanilla is not giving like a creamy vanilla and I get almost something kind of like the way the powderiness is in here, I'm sorry to say, is a little bit like um, diaper like clean diaper, you know, but just that or baby powder or baby wipe, like just a baby bag. This is a diaper bag. Initially, initially, top of the thing, only on the tester, that type of stuff. Just the way that went down, didn't love. I kind of expected a little bit more of vanilla and even the Coca-Cola, like I would have preferred something even kind of syrupy coming off of this. I feel like I could see Coca-Cola coming off like syrupy, thick, medicinal, and I almost would have preferred that because this feels just kind of safe and like I can't really smell it. I almost get something kind of nutty, honestly. Like, uh, I don't know, uh, that's what I'm picking up. I don't know what that is. So, not my favorite. I don't feel like the pear is coming through too much though. So, I guess that's good. I'm not sure if the like girls can be line is really for me because the other one that I have also was a little bit of a letdown. There's only one more in the line. I feel like I just need to smell it to just know. But the packaging I feel like is cuter than the smell. That's never a good sign. All right, last, this is kind of fulfilling a uh, childhood fantasy for me. Definitely living out a little childhood moment here. I have some Katy Perry fragrances. I think I'm really close to having almost all the ones that she's done. I almost feel like when it comes to celebrity fragrances, like I was a child when I feel like the rise and just huge boom of celebrity fragrances was happening. So these are all the fragrances that I remember people having. I remember coveting, wanting myself. And I never had any of the cat ones from Katy Perry. I love a good kitschy bottle. And I just couldn't pass these up because I know these are gonna get harder and harder to come by. And I I wanted to get my hands on them. So this one is purr, so let's smell that. I mean, it's kind of like all the others, right? Like sweet vanilla, there's some peach, some coconut. We'll see what actually comes through. Again, I feel like with celebrity scents, it's not always, oh. It's a little bit fresh still for all those notes. A little bit clean, a little bit fruity. I feel like I'm getting something almost kind of, oh, maybe it's the bamboo for that freshness. I don't hate it, I do not hate it. And it doesn't smell as dated as I thought it, it would. So that's kind of nice, but I just, I had to for this bottle. I think it's so cute and that goes the same for Meow. I don't know which one came out first, but I am telling you, I remember back in the day, people would get this and they'd have like a necklace that came with it or they'd have like a charm thing that that came with it or 
I don't know if they were doing solid perfumes too. Like, I remember just people having accessories of this shit and being like slightly jealous as a kid, like, oh my gosh, you know? And now I'm an adult and living that out. So this one is the Meow. So similar bottle, lighter purple color. I'm excited for this one. I hope that it's not horrible. My favorite one though from Katy Perry, I have to say like that I genuinely like nowadays. Like, you know, not just for nostalgia, not just because whatever. Oh, this is, I initially got something tart. I don't know why, like grapes or something to me, but then it's kind of powdery as well. There's pear and tangerine, so I guess it's coming from that. And then lots and lots of like white florals, gardenia, honeysuckle, orange flower, lily of the valley. But then it has like vanilla musk and sandalwood in the base and some amber. And I feel like it must be the pear that comes off just like a little bit tart. It must have smelt something like this. It almost gives a Swedish fish vibe, but not as tart as that. And a little bit more just like soft and kind of powdery and musky. It's so interesting because something I'm really realizing is I do think that scents can be trendy in a way that like is collective. So you can kind of tell like older smelling scents what was popular then. It's so funny that we're all just people like why is how we experience scent so different? But I think it's because it actually is something that's like trendy or not, you know what I mean? And so I feel like as much as these aren't bad, they do smell like dated in some way and I can't put my finger on why. And when I smell new celebrity fragrances they feel more current you know what I mean and like more in in line with what is popular today in terms of scent and I, I just find that really fascinating and interesting but we're gonna leave it off last one I was so excited because this was back in stock and this is an older one Royal Revolution from Katy Perry this is that kind of like crystal looking bottle I will say she definitely did it on the packaging did I even say what scent I like from Katy Perry like the one I actually liked that is indie indie is so good if you like that kind of musky sandalwood that's a really good celebrity scent that I genuinely think is great. I just, you know, wish it lasts. I feel like it has no lasting power, so you really gotta douse it on. But for the price for that, if you see Indie, it is a solid, solid pickup. If you like something like Milky Musk, Julia Has a Gun, Sunny Side Up, I feel like it's the celebrity version of that and it's really good. All right, anyway, this is the Royal Revolution, I think it was, um, and that's the bottle. Look at that. It's a moment. <laughs> it's a moment. I'm interested to see if I even like this one. This is definitely because of the bottle. Bottle. Again, I have like this whole celebrity thing going you guys. I know. Oh, okay It's just light. It's kind of to me I get some citrus almost something a little bit musky a little bit woody But just soft like this is something that feels kind of genderless as well At least to my nose it has some pomegranates some blackthorn I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that as a note don't really know It does have some leather in here as well and some other florals, but it's not anything I can like I can't distinguish any of the note like, you know I feel like that's something that happens sometimes with the cheaper fragrances or more inexpensive fragrances or celebrity fragrances But overall, I think it's nice like it's a nice scent if you were to hug someone It's just kind of clean smelling and it's a, a scent that's there. It's not just skin pretty light I imagine this would last on the skin about maybe two hours. Maybe if you're lucky <laughs> That's definitely a plus with a lot of more expensive perfumes I feel like like there are some cheaper perfumes that have that lasting power But I feel like the benefit of spending a little bit more or finding a fragrance that has those notes, maybe something a little bit more special or unique. They usually have higher percentages of oil and they usually uh, last a lot longer. But that is my fragrance net haul. If I had to say what my genuine favorite is, is the Dolce & Gabbana Dolce Garden. This I genuinely am excited to wear and try in what feels like a real way. And I think it's interesting because this is like one of the ones you can actually, I think, get at Sephora still. You know, that's kind of interesting. But this is probably my number one takeaway. The other two that kind of are in the next tier down are the guests the seductive red the first one I started with and then the pure excess these I also am excited to try they still have something about them that feels wearable to me and that I could get into especially once I experience the dry down and experience that like full wear on my skin I feel like the celebrity scents kind of fall in the middle and then these three I definitely am questioning how much I'll actually like them um, this kind of pear jelly belly moment it's a moment <laughs> the guava one definitely initially was a no but like i said that dry down was getting a little bit better so another one i really want to experience and then this was probably the biggest letdown just because i do like zadigan voltaire so much but i do think this is her or this is line is maybe the way to go i just haven't had good luck with the girls can be line so um those are my thoughts i'd love to know have you tried any of these what do you think about them and then what are some of your favorite blind buys or any of the perfumes that are 
are a little bit more affordable on FragranceNet or any of those discount sites that you think are really great, that you think I should try out, let me know. Like I said, I'm always on the hunt, trying to find stuff that is affordable, that is actually good. There are those diamonds in the rough. I feel like I can be a little bit harsh, I'm not gonna lie. So some of these might be some people's favorites. That's just how scent goes, but I am a, a little bit harsh. I want things to stack up to my niche favorites, which I tend to like niche more than anything. So yeah, if you have any of those diamonds that you found, uh, please let me know in the comments. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.